Hi guys, welcome to a video tutorial with me, Clarice. In this video, we are learning how to paint this pretty scene right here. Before we get into the details of supplies and such, I wanna remind you guys, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, as it really does help my channel grow. And I would love to see your work, so if you do post on social media, please do tag me and follow along. Now let's get started. Here's the supplies I'm going to be using for this. We're using the Princeton Around Neptune number no. six, Princeton Heritage Zero for our nice pine trees. And then the Princeton Velvet Touch number no. four. For paper, I'm using my Bao Hong watercolor paper right here. And then for colors, I'm using my Dalaroni set of watercolors. We're gonna be using the Aquafine Permanent Mauve, the Alizarin Crimson Hue, Indigo Yellow Hue, sorry, Indian Yellow Hue, and then Payne's Gray. I've got water ready, I've got a little palette handy, and we are, oh, let's not forget our paper towel. And let's begin. So, actually, there it would be handy to have one more brush something like a Princeton number 12 or even a flat brush of any sorts. And this is mainly to do our first step to getting nice blends, which is dampening our sheet of paper. So I'm just taking the water on my brush and I am gonna go all the way down. So we have finished dampening our sheet of paper. We're going to allow this to sit for just a bit while we are mixing our colors. So while this is sitting, I am going to explain to you which colors we are using. So I'll be using the the mauve, I believe this was mauve, permanent mauve, the alizarin crimson hue, and then the Indian yellow to do our skies. Okay, so we're gonna do the yellow in the middle. We'll do the purple on one side and then the pink on the other. Or you could do the yellow on the extreme left. Purple, pink, yellow. It, I'll leave that up to you guys. I think, you know what, I like that idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off with the purple, as I mentioned. And we're just gonna do this. And look at that gorgeous bloom. Then we're roughly clearing that and I'm adding the pink. And then once that is done, roughly washing off again and we're gonna get some of the yellow. And we just wanna get a nice version dark potent colors on here so now once that's done we're washing off the color from our brush taking off all excess water and we're going to blend this in in certain areas so for instance like I'm taking the yellow and I'm trying to get a nice smooth blend with just a damp brush we're doing the same thing on this side here we're sort of blending in that nice purple into the pink Getting a nice, beautiful sky. Feel free to kind of get that nice, keep going over it a few times and you're not pressing down your brush too much. You're just lightly grazing. I think I want to get a little bit more yellow in here between the pinky areas. And so I'm just dropping in a bit more of that yellow there. All right, so we let that sit for now and we're gonna go on to doing our mountains. So for our mountains, I'm using my Payne's Gray. This is still damp, so we're gonna get a nice chunk of Payne's Gray and we're doing this.
And I'm going to sort of allow this, this mountain to sort of sit right there. You can even lift up your sheet a bit to get that color flowing downward. You get that nice, gorgeous bleed going downward and upward into the sky. And I'm dropping in a bit more of that color here. And then what we're doing is taking our number four, getting our Payne's Gray straight from the color cake. And we're going to lightly extend from our mountain upward. And this is to indicate our pine trees, which we're going to paint in right after it's dried up properly. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're just gonna wash off most of the water from our brush and lightly take this and then just sort of smoothen out the base of the mountain, for example. and then even the bottom here. So we get a nice faded look. Okay, we're gonna do one more mountain, a small one down here. And notice how much darker this is, and that's mainly because this area has now dried up. So I've washed off most of the color from my brush and I am smoothening out this base area of the mountain. And then with the number four, we're doing the same thing that we did up there. We're going to extend to indicate trees. You can start from the base up or from the top going down below. I'll leave that up to you guys. But this is typically the look we're going for. You can even dab just a little bit more color. Dabbing color kind of intensifies the darkness. It's, um, it's pretty much called layering and you're just getting a nice darker feel in certain areas. So feel free to add dab just a little bit of it here and there, maybe from the extreme right and just slightly tapering as you go downward or to the base of the mountain rather, giving you a little bit more definition. So we allow this to dry for a tad and then we're gonna get back on here and then we're gonna use the number two to create our pines. So while this is drying, let me show you how we're doing our pines. I've zoomed in to show you exactly the technique behind our pines so you get a better understanding. So we're gonna use the number two, like I said, getting color directly from the color cake, making sure it's nice and pointed, the tip. We're gonna start lightly with a little line and then we're just going to extend to create little rough edges to the tree. And then for the base, because we've got color on the mountain already, you're gonna wash off, you can use the number four, you don't have to use the number two, and just lightly blend this in. It's going to blend into the mountain it'll be perfectly fine. It's just gonna give you a nice seamless look. Um, another way to do these trees is if you just do your little line and then just go sideways, as opposed to going downward, which is what I have happening there. Um, feel free to leave some gaps in between because most of the firs aren't quite um, full especially on the mountains, you get some that are very, I guess, eroded by the wind or what have you. So make it look natural, make it look loose, and just have fun with this. We're waiting for this to dry just a little bit more because the, 
if we don't allow this to dry properly, we're going to get blooms and we don't want blooms. So that's why we, we just need to make sure it dries up properly and then we can go in and do our little details. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I feel like this area here is too bare. So what I'm going to do is a little cheat move. So I'm just gonna go in and do this, dampening the area. Then I'm gonna get a little bit more off the Payne's Gray with my number six, and I'm just going to create another mountain, but almost like a little tiny one right here. And then washing off the brush. You can also make sure you kind of lift off your sheet like this or your, your paper. So it kind of helps the the color go in the direction you want it to go in. And then I'm tapering the edges. So we have a nice little mound happening there. I don't wanna extend that too much, so I'm pulling that color towards the mountain or I'm getting it towards right there. And then just doing a little quick seamless blend into the base. Perfect, so now we've got three little mounds happening and I think the first one is ready. So here we go, exactly like how I showed you in the demo. We're gonna go ahead and, I wanna make sure it is, get our paint. And we're gonna start off with one right here. So starting at the top. Just in there. And that's the idea. So continue doing this for the rest and kind of pepper these pretty trees all over the place and we'll get right back when you're done this mountain. All right, so the my top mountain or the first mountain is done. I kind of sporadically added a couple of trees. I love this little white space bit that's happening here. It just seems like it is a loose natural effect. And now we're gonna continue using our paints gray and create some over here. We're gonna allow this a little bit more time to dry off and start off with doing these guys right here. So I'm gonna start with this one at the very edge starting with my line and then doing a jaggedy sort of progression downward. And this is a tad bit darker than the other mountains because it was, the sheet at the bottom was drier. And so that's why we have more solid looking lines as opposed to the nice faded look. So if you're looking for a consistent look with your gloomy dreamy mountains i suggest that you dampen the lower bit of your sheet before doing the lines or before even painting um painting the mountain in and very similar to this idea here remember how i went back in after dampened it and then did my little mound you do the same thing for the bottom i kind of like the distant faded look and then the nice solid look in the front i feel like it adds a little bit more depth and um, add some hierarchy to my elements here. And here we go, let's do some more. Leaving some of these areas just like solid lines, I think also is reflective of how there are some stumps or three tree the uh, tree stumps anyone else mess that up tree three here we go sporadically adding a couple more of these babies all along again feel free to pause and just go with the flow and continue doing your little trees and we'll get right back
this is what I have ended up with and I am quite satisfied with how this has turned out. We're going to finish off with doing a few little tree stumps for this area here and then we are done. So same idea, if you want to just do about two or three over here, so it looks like a cute little lone island mountain bit. It's a mountain, not an island. That works. And just remember to add your little smudge at the bottom, or to smudge out the bottom rather. And this way it blends into the mountain. So taking my number six, making sure it's just damp, doesn't really, isn't really holding a ton of water. I'm just blending this color in. And then if you wanna take advantage of this bit and just kind of lightly add a semblance of an idea that there's a couple more faded trees in this area this is the perfect opportunity. Why? Because it is damp. And while it is damp, it gives us more muted looks. And so the contrast between having your dark trees versus your light trees at the side is really, really, again, helps with your foreground background and adds a little bit of depth. Feel free to, at the end, just go with a very light, watered down version of your Payne's Gray and just add a couple more of these light trees around. And then you should be done. So I do want to add one more little detail to this and that's a little bit of a splatter. So I'm going to use my number four. I'm going to get some of my Payne's Gray. I'm going to mix a muted sort of version of it over here. 30% color, 70% water-ish, maybe even 40, 60, and just lightly do a tap to get a very cute little splatter happening. And then I'm dipping my brush in water to get a more muted splatter happening. So this way we've got two different variations of splatter and color. And then last but not least, taking in our number two, we're gonna do little birds in the air. And I'm gonna do some over here. We'll, we'll do some of the larger ones that are closer. Um, and then some at the top as well. Soaring in the sky, being free. And that, my friends, is it. So this is what the end result looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what you thought. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It really does help my channel grow and I can continue making fun videos like this for you guys. So. Thanks again for watching and if you end up painting this and posting this on social media, please do tag me. I would love to see your work. I have listed my handles below and guys, hope you have a wonderful day and we'll chat soon. Bye.